as you envision this new life for yourself, it's very important that you first get still. Just absorb it, deal with it, acknowledge it, get still, get quiet, go within and say, Lord, I know you're with me. I'm trusting you to bring me through this experience. I know that this is not the end. This is only a new beginning. See, right now, we need to know that God is still in business. Don't get caught up in this politics and all the other stuff that's going on out here. This is a space and a place where we need to do what Adam Clayton Powell said, former congressman out of New York. Keep the faith, baby. Keep the faith. It's easy to keep the faith when things are going great. Your marriage is working out. The children are acting like they have good sense. But in this place where we are right now, this is a 9-11 place. What do you mean by that? When 9-11 happened, things changed in terms of travel. Things changed in how we interact and how we look at ourselves and, and becoming more mindful and diligent in terms of security. Things change dramatically. And we have to make the reality become front and center right now and know this is it. We will not be going back to way things were. So get with it. Get with it. And so as you look at yourselves, 183,000 people have lost their jobs. When I was fired from WVKL, they didn't just, they didn't tell me to my face I was fired. They changed the lock so I couldn't get in the radio station because they knew I was crazy. They changed the lock. I'm out there trying to get the key in the, in the lock. <laughs> it wouldn't fit. Five o'clock in the morning, I was supposed to come on at six o'clock and it would fit. I was baffled. I saw a car. It was Reverend Mike Reeves, who now owns that radio station. And I went and sat in my car and I turned on the radio and said, hello, this is Reverend Reeves. This is the Mike Reeves show. Whoa. I said, they had fired me. I did radio. I love radio. I mean, it was my thing. It, 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 I enjoyed it to this day, but I had to rethink my life. That, that, was, that was my superpower at that time. That's all that I knew at that time. So when, when something happens to you, when a disruption happens to you, I have a friend named Will Jackson, and, 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 and he has a book called Life Happens. Life happens. It does now. So the key is now what? It happens. Now what? And so when we look at that, now what? What are you going to do? What actions are you going to take? And so when we just begin to think about that, here's what you have. You can begin to explore some other options. And then I want you to do this. Reach out to some people that you're close to about five or six and brainstorm about what your next move should be. Don't try and do it by yourself. Two heads better than one. Explore some other options. And fortunately for me, I had a friend named Horace Perkins who since passed. He was a salesman at the radio station. He came to my house, my apartment, Crossroads Apartments on Sunbury Road and brought some petitions that he got signed and said, you ought to run for state representative. I, that never crossed my mind, running for office. I said, man, I don't know anything about politics. He said, neither do the people who run. And so eventually he convinced me. I signed the petition and he filed them. I didn't file them. And I, 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 was, I got in in time and ran for office and won. And the rest is history. But had I not been fired, some things happen to you. But if you keep the faith, you realize that it happened for you. Here's what I know about you. If life has happened to you, if you're going through some stuff right now that I has not seen, 
ear has not heard, nor has entered the heart of mankind what God has in store for you. This is just an episode. This, this is not the end of the story of your life. This is just an episode. That's all that it is. It's, it's, it's an episode, an interruption. That's all that it is. And you're stronger than that. Don't underestimate yourself. See, if we look at this thing called life where we are right now with all of this craziness that's going on, you look at that debate the other night, crazy, 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 with a capital K. I just prayed and said, Lord, let me stay here long enough to create a better world for my 15 grandchildren and four great grandsons. So now you've been picked out to be picked on because you got it like that. And when you keep the faith and, and, and don't crumble because faith without being tested can't be trusted. And so you keep the faith and a, a, a spirit of optimism I'm going to handle this. I'm going to deal with this. There's something out here for me to do. There's something out here that's coming my direction. There's something out here that this is going to become a blessing to me. Rather than this happening to me, this has happened for me. And as a result of my being fired, and as a result of my never looking back, never, uh, in fact, for a period of time, I wouldn't even listen to the radio because I knew I would miss it so much. I stopped listening to the radio. I wouldn't look back and get paralyzed in depression, paralyzed in regret, paralyzed in anger. No, forgetting those things which are behind, reaching forth unto those things which are before, press to walk the mark, of a higher calling. There's a higher calling for you. There's a higher calling than something else. Your expiration date has come into play. And when you don't have enough courage or insight to know that you have outgrown the situation and it's time to move on, life steps in and move on you. Had I not been fired, I'd have never became a state legislator. The chairman of the Human Resource Committee passed 14 bills affected millions of people's lives in the state of Ohio. Had I not been fired, I'd have never produced specials for public television to raise millions of dollars. Had I not been fired, I'd have never became a motivational speaker, bought my mother a home, traveled around the world, and touched over 2.3 billion people's lives. They meant it for evil. God meant it for good. Mm-hmm. Mm-mm. They have no idea who they're dealing with, you, it's possible. You, 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 you have the ability to do more than what you were doing. Life happens, yes, Will was right. But you, you, you have comeback power. Willie, Willie Jolly was right, a setback is a setup for a comeback. You have comeback power. I've got a saying, if life knocks you down, try and land on your back, because if you can look up, you can get up. Come on, somebody. Well, <laughs> yes. Yes. I remember taking my, my children to the movies when I was fired, and, and we would go from one theater to the other. <laughs> and, eat popcorn. and I just decided just to get still just to get still, be still and know that all is well. Be still and know. Wes, it's hard to do that. When they serve you notice that you're about to be evicted, been through that, about to be foreclosed on, been through that too. It's hard. Going through a divorce, been isolated, with someone that you thought you knew. And now the, the negatives and the dysfunction and the craziness has magnified itself and there's nowhere to run and nowhere to hide and you've got to make a decision. So you know what? This is not gonna work. We, we, we got to make some kind of decision because somebody's about to die. <laughs> Let me 
to tell you something. Uh, oh, no, no. It was a different time, different space. And having help, having someone you can talk to, having someone that can help you clear your head, having someone that can help you get some guidance and get your bearings and, and, and assure you that you got something in you that's bigger and stronger than what life has thrown at you. And here's something else. Do what you need to do until you get to do what you want to do. What do you mean by that, Les? Can you imagine? I was the most popular disc jockey in the history of Columbus, Ohio. Everybody knew me for doing editorials, being a community activist, leading demonstrations on the air every morning. Wake up. This is Les Brown, the man about town, coming down the ramp like a natural bone chap. Look out, baby. I'm your love man. And I went from that in order to provide food for my family to cutting grass. Mm -hmm. a, a company, an organization that I'd help raise funds for, Comaco and Curtis Brooks. I said, man, can, can you give me a job? Find me something that I can do, marketing or promotion or something. He said, man, this is the welfare. Curtis, come on, I'm not looking for welfare. I just need some work. I no longer have the microphone. So he had no respect for me. So I got an opportunity to cut grass. People would see me cutting grass and say, that ain't Les Brown, circle the block. Because I used to do that as a kid and I'm very good at sculpturing lawn. And I was out there cutting grass. Why? Because I needed the money. That beat being home, being depressed. Do what you need to do until you get to do what you want to do. I knew as I was cutting that grass and people were circling the block, doing double stairs, that this was not permanent for me. This was just a temporary situation. I'd be willing to shine shoes, wait tables, do whatever is required with the other than breaking the law. No, because I, I ain't going to jail. No, I go to the bathroom. I don't even lock the door. <laughs> <laughs> oh, VA, now you gone there. Come on. Hello? <laughs> okay. I cut grass. And I had a lot of customers. Hey, child, guess who over here cut my grass? You won't believe this. The man about town, honey. Yeah, that's right. No. He, I, I'm telling you, he, yes, he is. He had to cut my grass down, and he better do a good job, too. <laughs> and then while I was cutting grass one day, what a mighty God we serve. A guy named Jim Irving from the Communication Workers of America. He circled the block. He looked. He said, can't be Les Brown. And, and he circled the block again and said, Les Brown? I said, yes, sir. My name is Jim Irving. I represent the Communication Workers of America. I, 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 I'm an organizer and I used to listen to you in the morning, your show, Yes, I Can and Yes, We Can. Man, you were very inspiring on the air. What are you doing out here, Congress? You live here? No, I've been fired. I heard that. So how long you been living here? I don't live here. You don't live here? No. Why are you cutting grass? It's how I make a living now. You, you're making a living cutting grass? Yeah. Oh, man. Oh, oh, oh no. Man, you better than this. No, 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 no. Come on. I will hire you. He gave me a job. I became an organizer for the Communication Workers of America. Jim Irving. He was such a nice guy. He gave me a shot. If you keep your head up, like my mother said when I was unloading the truck after we had been foreclosed on, taking furniture in the house that we've moved out of, and the roaches and the rats said, look at God, oh, they're back again. If you keep your head up, 
doors will open that you did not see. Had I not been out there cutting grass, had I been home feeling sorry for myself, being depressed, being angry, he would have never seen me on the corner. But I was willing to keep my head up. I was willing to be actively engaged to do what I needed to do to get to where I wanted to go. There's something better for you. God is not through with you yet. What has happened right now for you? Hey, judge not according to appearances, but right judgment, righteous judgment, right thinking that you will make it, it's possible. Write words, speak positively. I'm getting ready for the next episode, the next chapter in my life. And write words. Don't speak any negatives on your life at all. Death and life is in the tongue. Write relationships. Look at the relationships that you have. I want you to write this down. Bread and butter relationships. Determine who are your bread and butter relationships. What do you mean by that, Les? bread and butter relationships. Let me share this with you. You have some friends that you just kick it with, you socialize with, you play bid whist with, or, or various other recreational things with, all right? Then you have some people that you just talk trash with, <laughs> talk politics. I, I talked about son Calvin every morning. What's going on in the crazy world that we're now in? And then you have people who are your bread and butter people that if your car breaks down in the middle of the night and you say, hey, I need some help, my car broke down, the bread and butter person will ask, where are you? If they're not a bread and butter person, they will ask, what time is it? You need to know who your bread and butter people are. And so Perkins was my bread and butter person Jim Irving was my bread and butter person. There are people who know you and that will help you. And some will help you that you don't even know. And many people who know you, family members and friends who can help you, won't help you because they know too much about you. Just be optimistic. Just be open to the possibilities and ask for help. Not because you're weak, but because you want to remain strong and ask for help. Don't stop until you get it. Most people won't ask for help because of pride. Pride cometh before fall. Ego, ego, edging God out. Ask for help. And don't stop until you get it. Somebody somewhere will help you. I'm telling you what I know. I got here because a lot of people helped me. A lot of people I have never met who said, I heard this guy speak. He calls himself Mamie Brown's baby boy. We ought to bring him in to speak. 95% of speaking engagement, most people don't know, is a result of personal recommendation. All right? Here's something else. Learn something new. I went from being a disc jockey and I learned how to become a public speaker. Learn something new. And, 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 and my learning something new, and it took me a minute, and I was willing to put my money where my mouth was. I had to determine what is it that I do best, and what I do best is communicate with people. I'm a people person. That's who I am. That's what I do. And, and my learning something new, had I not been fired in life and when you don't have enough courage or insight to know that you've outgrown a situation and it's time to move on, life will move on you. I'm thankful that life moved on me so that I can live my calling. I was working on a job. A job is what you get paid for. Your calling is what you are made for. I was made to speak and I wasn't moving fast enough and God said, you know what? I'm gonna have to do something up in here because he, he, he he's having too much fun living a misplaced life. LB Triple P, man about town, Les Brown. He's much more than that. He's not an entertainer. He can be entertaining, but I got more for him to do.
So I got to put him to the test because faith without being tested can't be trusted. So I got to throw some stuff at him. I've got to test him and see how he responds. Hmm. What a mighty God we serve. Let me tell you something. Just know. What a mighty God we serve. Oh, you might be going through something right now, but I'm encouraging you to grow through this thing called life. We are here to grow. We are here to create. We were created by the creator to create. I created a whole new life that had I not been fired from radio, you would not be looking at me now. Had I not been fired, I would have not spoken to millions of people's lives around the world. Had I not been fired, some of you have been listening to me since you were children. And had I not been fired, you would not have met this Les Brown. See, you're in a place right now. Paul said, I must die daily. We must die daily. We must continue to grow, continue to expand, continue to reach higher. Socrates says a man's reach is to supersede his grasp or what are the heavens for? Come on now. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, it's the time that you got to stand up inside yourself and know that this is a new beginning. Those of you at, at American Airlines and Delta, people crying over jobs that they hated anyhow, mixed emotion. That's, that's like seeing someone you hate drive off a cliff in your car. You're glad they're gone, but not in your car. <laughs> oh, behave, whatever, hello. <laughs> oh, but you're fired up today, yeah. Yeah, because I know what it's like to be fired and you, and you don't see it coming. I had a friend I was talking to yesterday. Oh, one of my colleagues is fired. Oh, I'm working real hard now, hoping that they won't fire me next. It has nothing to do with performance. They got technology that can replace you in a heartbeat. Learn something new. What if you lose your voice? Got a new book called, You Gotta Be Hungry, The Greatness Within to Win, by the way. Go to IamHungryLessBrown.com and get my new book. I Am Hungry Less Brown. Dot com or get it for some friends that you know that have lost their job. It'll help them to stabilize themselves and get clear in their head about creating the next episode in their lives rather than moaning and croning about what just happened. Helen Keller said, when one door closes, another door opens, but most people spend time being depressed, being anxious, worried about, and traumatized by the closed door. They don't see the open door. Hmm. Hmm. This is your time. Judge not according to appearances. Some things happen to you. But when you trust God, when you know he's still in charge, you realize it happened for you. That you just reached the expiration date. And he said, okay, if you're not gonna move, I'm gonna move. <laughs> no, 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 not, not right now. Can you just wait a Lord? Can you just wait a minute till my children get out of college? Can you just wait a minute? Just wait a minute. No, don't do it right now. I'm not, I'm not quite ready right now. <laughs> That's why I told you, walk by faith and not by sight. No, 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 hold a minute. Please, Lord, not right now. Leap and grow your wings on the way down. I got you back. <laughs> I need to see this presentation myself. This is hot, baby. <laughs> Y'all need to look here, like this and share it. They, they, they have craziness going viral. There, there are people who need to hear this message today. There are people that you know, 183,000 to begin with, who, who applied for unemployment compensation. They need to hear. Yeah. 
No, don't be sitting around waiting on a check. Create a job. Create your own business. Think from the standpoint that I was created by the Creator to create, because you can. Hmm. Yes, you can. It's possible. Mama may have, Papa may have, but God bless the child that has His arm. It's necessary. It's you, George Washington Carver said. Do what you can where you are with what you have, and never be satisfied. It's hard, but you can do hard. If you do what is easy, give up. If you do what is easy, take a permanent solution for a temporary situation. If you do what is easy, just lay around and be depressed and and just low in energy and feel hopeless and powerless. If you do what is easy, your life will be hard. But if you do what is hard, stay active, be optimistic. Know that it's possible. Know that God is on your side. If you do what is hard, know that He'll never leave you nor forsake you. No greater is He that's in you than He that's in the world. Know that you're more than a conqueror. Know that you've been given authority and dominion over everything on the face of the earth. If you do what is hard, your life will be easy. <laughs> He's on fire today, yeah. Hmm. This is your time. Yet not according to appearances. Things may happen around you. Things may happen to you. But the things that really count are the things that happen in you. These things ye should do, and greater things shall ye do. Let that mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal to God. Boy, this thing called life, 